What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman of The Time Teller and it's time for another T3 watch rant. Now guys, we're not going to be ranting about anything negative today. Uh, we're actually going to be talking about something I'm very passionate about and it actually has to do with the question I've been getting a lot from probably most of my newer viewers. So I see myself as a bit of a vintage watch collector. I don't know if I'm an aficionado, but I'm at the very least a proponent of vintage watch collecting. I think it's a whole lot of fun and I talk about it all the time on this channel. Well, a lot a lot of my new reviewers have been writing to me saying, um, well, if you love vintage watches so much, why would you ever wear anything but a vintage watch? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, let's talk about that today. It's 11.05 AM. Let's get down to business. Okie dokie, so vintage watches, the stories they tell, the character they have, the charm, the history, I've gone on and on about that on this channel. But for any of you who've been following me for, you know, any length of time, you would know that I actually own a lot of modern watches and I really enjoy wearing those too. In fact, most of my dive watches, with the exception of my Rolex Submariner 16800, are modern watches. That's right, things like my Seiko Tuna SBBN 031, that's a very modern iteration of the Seiko Tuna, and things like this, my modded Seiko 5KX by 4.44 p.m. made custom for me. This is known as the T3 Timinator, and uh, yeah, there's pretty much nothing factory about this watch. It has a 5KX dial, but that's about it. 200 meter water resistance rating with a threaded crown that says T3 on it. So if you want to learn more about this watch, don't worry, I'm going to be doing a full in-depth review and uh, I'm very excited to have this watch in my collection. And when we look at dress watches, it's true, I cherish things like my 1945 Vacheron Constantine 4533C and things like my Rolex Bubbleback 2940 from 1940 and my great-grandfather's Elgin Small Seconds, uh, but the truth is there's a breath of fresh air that comes with wearing something a bit more modern like a Seiko cocktail time. You see, I love wearing my old watches. Oh, who's worn them before me? What stories could this watch tell? Yada, yada, yada. But the sheer ease of wearing something more modern, I just don't have to worry about the watch as much. So take my Rolex 16800, for instance. It is a Submariner, has a 300 meter water resistance rating. It's been serviced, it's in good health, great health, in fact, and I still get it wet from time to time. It is by no means a babied watch. But let's be honest, when I wear something like my Seiko Tuna or this T3 Timinator 5KX mod, uh, don't you think I'm a little bit less cautious? Yeah. And don't even get me started on G-Shocks, okay? Those things are utterly indestructible. I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't have an extra peace of mind, uh, a little bit of confidence while wearing a DW5600 over my grandfather's Hamilton Brock. But see, therein lies the fun of being a watch collector, right? You can show that discretion. You can choose what to wear at what time. You can kind of have a Batman utility belt, the tool for the job, so to speak. For instance, when Connie and I head over to La Jolla, California, one of my favorite places to go. We explore the tide pools. We have fun. A little bit slippery, but you know, if you're careful, you can find some cool uh, starfish. Maybe go over and look at some seals. I actually took a really cool picture of a seagull. It let me get like right next to it. It was, it was actually kind of freaky. I'm going to try to find that picture and have Gato throw it up on screen. Uh, but I digress, okay? La Jolla, California, one of Connie and I's favorite little getaways. But when I go there and we explore the tide pools and we hang out amongst the wildlife, um, yeah, I'm probably going to wear something a bit more modern and not my Grand Seiko J14070. However, when we go to a restaurant later that night and pick up some dinner, yeah, I might choose to wear that vintage Grand Seiko. But there's another Side to this, okay? Let's put functionality and a resilient modern build aside. Those aren't the only reasons I might want to wear a modern watch. Currently, there's designs that modern watches have that really couldn't be pulled off on a vintage piece. That's just the truth. Let's look at the pristine snowy dial, that hyper detail of my Seiko Fugashiki limited edition. Uh, yeah, you're probably not going to find that on a vintage piece. And uh, this watch is just incredibly beautiful, such detail and just incredibly captivating to look at. And I admit, uh, there isn't a vintage watch that I have found 
that has this dial. So yeah, that's one point for a modern watch. Or another example, something we kind of take for granted nowadays, display case backs, okay? Super duper prevalent amongst watches made now, but in vintage watches, uh, you don't see them all that often. So when I feel like wearing a watch with those attributes, maybe a display case back, maybe a really crazy detailed snowy dial, um, yeah, I'm gonna pick one of my modern watches over a vintage watch, that's just how it goes. So having said all of this, do I like modern watches more than vintage watches after all? Uh, no. I still think I'm, you know, more of a vintage watch collector. But there is absolutely nothing wrong with wearing a modern watch on your wrist. I love those too. And there you have it guys, a little bit of a T3 watch rant. Not so much of a rant, just kind of... I don't know, getting something off my chest, letting you know how I feel about vintage watches versus modern watches. Uh, but I'd love to hear your take on this whole situation. I know some of you in my audience exclusively uh, collect modern watches. You won't even touch a vintage watch. And I know other people that exclusively deal with vintage watches. They don't like anything that's, you know, uh, made after the 1970s. So please sound off in the comment section. I'd love to hear all your perspectives. And if you're new here, if you learned something during this episode, please uh, say hi in the comment section. I'd love to meet you. And hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And hit the bell icon, because we are producing so much content here. And if you're a channel member, you get six pieces of content a week for only $4.99 a month. That's right, we get the majority of our support from our channel members. We don't use Patreon here, we use something called YouTube channel memberships. And uh, yeah, $4.99, we get the support, our editors get to eat, and uh, I'm able to pick up watches to review, and it's just, you know, it's very, very helpful, and we're super thankful, and we couldn't do any of this without my certified T3 bots. And if you're interested in some really cool watch-related gear, everything the watch collector needs, check out the affiliate links in the description below. We got watch toolkits, watch straps, watch winders, a whole bunch of modern watches over at my Amazon store. So click that link, check it out. But if you're more of a vintage guy, go ahead, check out the number one place to buy affordable vintage luxury watches serviced with a one-year warranty and hand-picked by me. That's my personal website, www.thetimetellershop.com. Guys, we do weekly restock there and every time we do a restock things get gobbled up so please when I tell you there's a restock go and check it out for instance we did a restock at the beginning of this week and already there's only two watches left so uh, yeah jump on those or wait for the next restock but whatever you decide to do thank you so much for the support and thanks for hanging out with me for a little bit please like comment and subscribe I'm Jory Goodman the time teller always remember I didn't invent time I just tell it <laughs> Let's go.